Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc., the channel all about bringing you as much nerdy content as possible. Today for you, we're back in Dragon Village M, as always, and we got a brand new dragon that just hit today. Uh, I was going to do a, an early video on it, but I decided to wait, get, you know, get it in game before I uh, drop this. But I've already been doing some research on this guy, and wow. I'm going to tell you right now, this is probably going to be one you want to get as fast as possible. The raid up is started today. I'm right after this video. I'm going to go get myself one. But why, right? Let's find out. As always, if you're new to the channel, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I put out Dragon Village M content every single week for you guys when I can. Um, and I do review videos of dragons every time a new one comes out. I, I refuse to let one slide by. So if you're always you know curious about the next big thing that's coming up, then definitely check out the channel because I'll always be covering it. All right. Um, as well as I try to do a summoning of the new dragons when possible, when they're worth it. Right. Uh, I do summoning videos every single month. So if you're into those, definitely uh, check those out. I've got plenty in the vault for you to watch as well as uh, future ones, so make sure you subscribe. Um, if you really enjoy what I do and you know you want to you know, help uh, support me so I can continue to support this game and support the community by helping it grow so that way the game doesn't die off, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon. I have a link in the description below for that. You can get access to my Discord server and, uh, and cool stuff like that, account takeovers, that sort of thing. Uh, be on the lookout. Eventually, I'm going to update all my videos and put a link in the description below for uh, t-shirts. So it'll have the, the Battle Ready Ink logo across the chest. I'm going to have a black one and a white one. Uh, just got to work out a few kinks and, uh, and get those ordered, all right? So stay tuned for those. But let's look at this guy, right? So it is a support type, right? Nat 5. And uh, so we got a couple different elements here. We got an earth type, a water type, and a dark type. Uh, I feel like we're one short. I feel like we should have gotten four, but maybe we've just been getting spoiled too much with four element type dragons. Uh, it's going to be a matter of time before we get a two here very, very soon, I feel like. Uh, but they better make it worth it. That's all I'm saying. But uh, So let's look at this. So that's the adult form. And then we got the, the junior and uh, the baby. I kind of like the baby, honestly. Some people in uh, PvP, they run like the baby forms. They get them all the way to max and then they change them so that way they go back to baby forms. This one's pretty cute. I don't much care for the adult one. I don't know. It just doesn't really do much for me, honestly. I don't know. Something about it. Too birdy, I don't know, planty kind of look to it. Something about it just kind of throws me off. But uh, oh well. Uh, flavor text is an elegant and graceful dragon. It is known for its elegant flying motion. It likes elves, so it always carries an elf doll with it. Uh, that's kind of cute. I don't see the elf doll anymore, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, makes sense. It's very earthy, D&D-esque kind of feel to it. But let's look at these skills. All right. So pretty much across the board, I think most of them are all pretty much the same. So your drag skill is going to be a, a 3 Three count target, straight line attack, um, attack enemies with a beam of light, create a barrier equal to 7% of your max HP for three allies with very low HP for 10 seconds. This is very familiar. Uh, we have other dragons in the game that already do this. This is cut and paste the exact same skill of other support types that we have, uh, like Pharaohs and Frosties. Pay attention to that last bit. We're gonna might be seeing a lot of that. Sorry, my camera seems to be uh, lagging a bit today, and I'm not sure why. Oh well, don't worry about it. Uh, so, and I believe this is gonna be the exact same cut and paste across all dragons. All right, next passive. Uh, every set duration, so we can bump it up. Uh, so every 16 seconds, grant attack and critical rate increasing effects to allies at the rear. For 12 seconds so this is gonna be two of them so if you're using like an X formation or, or something of that nature you know you'll have your two out your two allies in the back and so that'll guarantee which two are gonna get it uh, if you're doing the a uh, plus sign where it's like the one and then the three I have no idea which one's gonna get it honestly so uh, you're better off just using an X formation 
or the uh, the backward C formation or whatever kind of weird shape like that. Um, so yeah, attack and critical rate effects. So other there's other passives that we've seen like this on the very same kind of build layout. Except usually it's grant two attack increasing effects. So I really like that this one gives out critical rate. Usually I like to build my dragon's critical rate pretty high. So that way I don't have to rely on getting critical rate buffs or anything like that. But the problem is my, my dragons always stack on too many attack buff increases. Because uh, you cap out at three. Uh, this kind of helps mitigate and prevent that from happening. So you don't have, you're not getting two attack buffs from your support, uh, an attack buff from yourself, from the DPS itself, an attack buff from your healer, right? Because you start doing stuff like that and you're, boom, you're too much. Uh, it's wasted, essentially. So getting that critical rate is kind of nice. But we're going we're gonna to keep going off of that, right? Um, so that's the earth type. Uh, water type basically just changes it, so in, uh, to the, gives the buff to the highest crit rate. The allies with the highest crit rate so which is pretty much always going to be your dps so it's not it's almost better than earth in that sense because then you can do a more you know unique formations however you got to be careful if you're running crit rate buff on your healer because you might not want to give this attack and crit rate buff to your healer all right maybe you do maybe it's a dragon that scales off of attack and you like to have some crit rate for some big super heals when it goes off maybe you do want this okay it's just a thing you got to be mindful of it's not quite as easy as the earth one to build but you get to use more unique formations um and uh then on your dark type which i believe this one might be a little different yeah so uh earth type is two two targets and uh, same with water one but then for some reason the dark type here oh it's got a shorter cooldown that's what it is so you can decrease it so that way it's every 13 seconds instead of the other two which are every 16 seconds however um so it's the, hi the highest crit rate again but this one's only for 10 seconds i don't really know why they kind of did this they changed it up so the bonus the buff is for a shorter amount of time by two seconds but then it, I don't know, it, the cooldown is three seconds less, right? So 13 versus the 16, so yeah, three seconds less, two seconds, I don't know. Very strange. Uh, I don't really know which one would be better, honestly. Maybe some of you math gurus out there can tell me which mathematically is the most uptime. That would be kind of an interesting to know. Um, so, but let's get on to the next passive here. Every set duration increase all allies' defense for 10 seconds. Also, you gain one mana. So we got a little mana battery going on here. Target count of five, so your whole team gets this buff. Uh, water is evasion for 10 seconds. So all you evasion guys out there building those awful evasion teams that I hate so much. Um, this would be a, probably a pretty good beneficial guy for you here. Um, and then dark type is critical evasion so uh i know their heart critical evasion is getting a little more popular sort of uh yes and no uh we'll get i want to actually talk about that a little bit more here in a second uh we'll go to the last passive here and this is what makes this dragon so phenomenal so phenomenal um while you're alive critical rate a uh, critical rate of attack type allies is increased by 30 percent and this is going to be the same on all three dragons this is what makes this guy so unique um if you'll notice all these other skills are super super familiar uh literally just right over here frosty which we got not that long ago has almost the same build out so create the barrier three allies with the lowest uh, hp seven percent of max hp every set duration this is what i was talking about earlier the two attack increasing effects so same amount of time and everything but instead of a crit rate and attack it's two attacks so that's what you got to kind of be mindful of passive um the passive is a little bit different except for you also gain the one mana so that's going to be kind of the difference here is uh so you got immune grants immune to effects i wouldn't really worry about the the removing harmful effects is kind of neat on uh, frosty 
And then this one here, while you're alive, damage caused by all attacks from attack type allies is increased by 15%. So this is that what I was harping on back when Frosty first came out. It's almost like adding an entire rune onto your dragons uh, in a way. Uh, it's like a free rune or maybe a free leadership skill if you want to look at that. However, it's only 15%. Whereas the new dragon is 30% crit rate. And both are going to only affect attack type allies. This is kind of a kind of a game changer, honestly. Why do I say that? If you're in the meta scene right now, like I mean, top tier PvP Coliseum status, crit rate dragons have been kind of taking the whole meta scene by storm. Uh, it used to be all about crit damage dragons, right? Like Dark Arcana. Dark Arcana can put out some crazy high numbers. But what was the problem that was running in with uh, running into these dragons? People were building very high crit rate avoidance. So, um, like the dark one down here has that passive uh, critical evasion. Critical evasion has gotten kind of popular because it combats critical damage dragons. Because when people build their crit damage, I'm guilty of it myself. We get just enough crit rate to just get us like in the 90% range, right? So, and that's with, you know, uh, leadership abilities like Kathos, uh, with dragon leadership skills, right? Where we get that 34% or whatever it is crit rate. Um, so that's, almost, that's about 50% right there just off of those two. And then you just need one rune or some good substats on your other runes and you could... Uh, essentially just have just a bare minimum crit rate to pretty much guarantee you're going to always crit uh once in a blue moon you won't but more often than ever not you will get a crit off those however when they build those critical evasion so if i've got 90 percent critical evasion or crit uh critical chance uh critical rate and they have say 20 percent critical evasion that's going to shut me down to 70 percent so see how it counteracts that so a lot of these dragons that used to put out crazy numbers, crazy high levels of damage, are getting those crits less often now, and less often, and less often. And so then their whole point of them scaling off a of crit damage is almost null and void, because they're not getting those crits anymore. So then people shifted the meta into crit rate scaling dragons. So they put their crit rate to like 150%, 170%, so they will always get a crit, no matter what, as well as their drag skills are scaling off a of critical uh, critical rate. So they do more damage the higher their critical rate is. Now, it's a balance issue, right? So they're more consistent, right? But say you take a, uh, you know, a dragon that has 100% crit rate, and 150% crit damage, that dragon right there, as long as it gets its crit, will do more damage. However, flip that. You do 150% crit rate and a 100% crit damage, it's going to do less damage overall. They're, they've, uh, trust me, I've seen it. They've done the math on it because I wasn't sure at first. I was like, what, really? Um, is it even that worth it? <coughs> It is um, for them because it makes it more consistent. Right now, in just the the vacuum, it seems like critical damage dragons are better. However, in actual practice, in PvP, in Coliseum, where teams are so strategically built, runes are very precise with critical evasion and stuff, the critical rate dragons are doing better. They're more successful because of the fact that they always get those crits whereas these crit damage dragons if we want to do good damage with our crit damage dragons we have to build a crap load of crit damage and only the very minimum amount of crit rate to just guarantee it in a vacuum if we start putting more and more effort into getting crit rate up then that's critical damage that we're losing out on so then we're uh we're less consistent but we do more damage when it does go off that's the difference okay would you rather crit every single time and do a solid amount of damage or would you rather uh crit sometimes 
but not every single match. But when you do, you do more damage, right? So it's a balancing game here. That's why critical rate dragons are, are coming into play so much more. Um, that's what makes this dragon so amazing is because all those people building those teams in the meta right now are going to die for this guy because that crit rate up is just amazing for them. Um, but that's not to say it doesn't benefit us crit damage dragon users, right? Our middle slot rune is almost guaranteed to be a crit rate rune, right? So you can either build like four reds and two pinks on attack based dragons or you can do all pink uh you know crit damage runes and then that middle slot on both of those will usually be a crit rate percentage right because you're going to need like the 45 percent uh crit rate from that uh rune as well as uh your leadership skills your uh, tamer skill and any kind of sub stats you got going so then that's going to put you at around the 90 percent mark uh, 90 to 100 just kind of depends on your substats really um, this right here is going to make it so that way if you have good enough substats on those dragons on those runes for for your attack types you can change that middle slot out for a crit damage rune you do that like i said that's the balancing thing you might not crit as often but when you do now that you're able to put that crit damage uh rune in there and that percentage in the middle with this guy kind of helping balance you out because remember you're getting the crit rate from this as well as the passive here that's going to give you a crit rate buff so you're getting your 30 percent as well as the uh the buff here so status effect will go to uh critical rate up that's another 30 percent right there so you're actually getting 60 percent crit rate off of this dragon I mean, you can scrounge up another 40%, okay? I mean, you're going to get almost 20 off of Kathos. You could run a Clown Dragon, anything, to get that last little bit. And that's assuming that you have zero crit rate on any other substats, which, if that's the case, you're building your runes wrong. You need crit rate in your substats, people. I'm just saying, like, if you're not doing that, what are you doing? That's on Attack-type Dragons, of course. Um, so, uh, this video is a little longer than normal, but... I really felt like I needed to hit this one home because I need to stress the importance of how good this dragon is, not only to crit rate uh, users like it kind of seems like, but also us crit damage guys. Um, you could even keep your dragons the same, and he's just going to give you a little—he's going to give you a bonus on what you already have. But taking your 90% up to 150 on a crit on a crit damage scaling dragon seems like a waste to me i'd rather drop that uh force slot for another crit damage rune and uh and be able to use this guy as my uh my other support um unfortunately this kind of tips the scales right because if you like me i use three mana cost dragons i use loris on my teams uh it's gonna take some bounce because i like the uh the double mana regen whenever I use a drag skill on my three mana uh, cost dragons, as well as I like the cooldown reduction on my drag skills. Um, that That's what Loris provides. However, throw some meditation runes on this one. I mean, you're going to get the free one here, the the, the crit rate, or the, uh, the earth one in the raid up summons, right? That's what we have right now. It's still just as good. Um, I don't really much care for this one here, this increase all out defense, but... It's not like I've got anything better to choose from. If it was like an attack, another attack thing, or attack speed, or something like that, this thing would just be mind-boggling. Uh, I think this kind of helps balance it out, but it's not bad. I mean, nothing wrong with a little defense, um, especially with this whole glass cannon meta. I feel like we're about to shift into very hard. Uh, a lot of people using single tar single mana dragons, or uh, sorry, not single mana, um, single DPS dragons, and then two supports. I don't know. We might be looking at a back into a shift of two DPS. I don't know. I couldn't tell you where the meta is going to go. Uh, that's kind of a whole nother discussion. Maybe I'll do another video on that, talking about where PvP is and where it's headed in the future, because that is a topic that will always be changing. Almost every time we get a new dragon like this that comes out, the the meta shifts in some way or form. Uh, kind of gone are the days of the double iris just destroying everything i think right now it's like a 
uh, a water jet dragon. A single water jet dragon with, like, two supports, a healer, and a trophius. Like, that's what's leading the pack these days, huh? Very interesting. Um, so, no telling where we'll go after this. I think it's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, you can use this dragon with three mana cost dragons, or two mana cost dragons, or one mana cost dragons. Uh, if you're using... Um, I forget what it is. That big purple dragon. That's the new Topaz. Uh, I see that one being used a lot too. Um, this works for everyone. Because it's just the free mana. Every, what is that, 15 seconds. As well as the meditation runes. You're going to have to run with this guy. Because it's not going to be enough on its own. Uh, but that's all I've got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, definitely put in the comment section below what you think about this guy. Um, like I said, I think it's going to be a meta shift. I think this guy is going to slide into the meta, and maybe we'll see something new, some new team builds. Maybe we'll see uh, back to the two DPS. We might still stick with the one. I'm not sure yet. Uh, definitely very going to be very interesting. Um, but, yeah, so let me know what you guys think, and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to go jump right into my summoning video right after this. So uh, it might take a couple days before you see that next video, but definitely stay tuned on see if I get this guy or not. I'm definitely hoping I do because I think I'm going to have to shift over and start using it. All right, guys. See you next time.